Alright, what's going on YouTube? We are finally back with another RPG episode. Actually, really any episode on my YouTube channel. It's been, uh, honestly, a fairly hectic month, uh, to be honest. I haven't been able to operate my computer very well, so I had to get Windows 7, install that, uh, and get that working. So, so that's been actually much slower than it should have been but i got windows 7 reinstalled onto a new hard drive and we uh and i just got some of my stuff copied over and we should be good to go for tutorials again and stuff and other videos so uh where we were last time is i believe the last episode we had killed our ai now this episode i want it to i want to turn the tables to where the ai can kill us now, uh, what we're going to do is, if you haven't already, now I I don't do stuff in this, I do nothing in this project unless it's in a video. So I don't remember, uh, forgive me for not remembering which video this was, but I don't actually remember which video I did this. But I did, in a previous video, uh, set up attacking animations for him. So if you haven't set up attacking animations, uh, I, you could look back in my videos. I will try to find uh, the video in which I did this, uh, but you can see I did the attack idle and the attack run. I did that, so I'll try and find the video that I did this, and if I find it, I will link it in the description. shouldn't be too difficult for me to find, though. Anyways, so you need to have all of this set up the way I do. Um, or at least you know somewhat close to it. The locations don't really matter. It's just the, uh, it's just of course the mechanics and coding behind it. So we need to have that up, and of of course you need to have this attack variable. Um, so what we go, what we are going to have to do, is I'm gonna actually have to shut off my monitor. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to go into his blueprint and add a collision. Uh, to enable us uh, to access his um, to access that variable to make it trigger. So we're going to add a collision. Let's go over to the viewport so that way we can edit its scale and location like we need to. So add a component and scroll down, do a box collision. Well, now I'm just going to make this uh, attack box or you can call it attack collision, whatever you really want to call it. But just something so that way you know that this is what he is, this is what he's using to trigger the attack. So we're gonna put it in front of his body, and uh, it's fairly, it's pretty well centered. Uh, I would like to put it up though, because of course he's not really gonna be able to attack by his feet. So if there's a small creature, small enemy AI or something that's by his feet, he's not really necessarily gonna be able to attack that. Although you could have that if you just want it to be a general hitbox and not necessarily insanely accurate. Uh, animations to go along with it but we're gonna have it pretty much his full body height I suppose because that'll work and I'm going to uh, sorry for the fast camera let me slow this down just a little bit and I'm going to actually uh, make it a little wider just to give him uh, some some leeway of attack I suppose and we're going to expand this out. So the way it works is, it, the way, if you don't know Unreal Engine scaling works, it's it works in both directions. So if you scale one axis, it symmetrically does it on both sides of the object. So we're going to actually have to scale that up and move that forward a bit. So I think that should be a good size, but if it's not, we can change that. So what we need to check is that the collision presets are good and they are on overlap all dynamics, so they're perfect. Now what we need to do is we need to on component begin overlap, add that, go back to the attack box, and on component end overlap, add that as well. Uh, of course, if you can't see these words, because uh, you know it's not they're not always visible, they're, they're probably like this, you just need to expand this, uh, or I believe if you expand this, it'll auto expand them for you as it just did. Anyways, so that's what you need to do there. Now we need to cast to our player. So I'm just gonna cast to bro, um, or not bro, RPG. So RP, cast to RPG, dude. And we're only gonna do this entire code for one of them, and then we're gonna duplicate it and just change the variable for the end overlap, because it works uh, the exact same way. Now we need to actually um, cast to his anims. So we need to cast to zombie dude anims. 
and the object will be the uh, anim instance of the mesh. Um, and I kind of want to just get that from behind there. Okay. Good. So now we need to drag off of this and set attack to true. Now what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate that down there. And we just want to do the same thing pretty much. So I'm line these up because my OCD uh, object can be connected to the same get anim instance and the object needs to be the other character. God, man, those slight slight angles just drive me crazy. Anyway, so that's what we need there. So I'm gonna save all of that up. So real quick, I just wanna check Obviously, we're not applying any damage right now. We just want to make sure that the animation works. So I'm going to play, and I want to get in. I want him to get my attention, and then, or vice versa. Okay, so it's we are in the hitbox, and he's not exactly hitting us. So um, there's a couple parts to that, but I mean it's good right now. Of course, if you would like later, you can refine that in two ways. The two ways you can refine the distance and whether he's physically hitting you or not is by shrinking shrinking the attack box as well as going to the event graph and lowering the acceptable radius or acceptance radius, my bad. Anyways, those are the two things that you can do to uh, if you shorten both of those, you can get them a bit closer. You can get the two uh, um, actors closer to each other to allow uh, probably the physical contact with the animation. Anyways, let's now actually apply damage when we are in that hitbox. So, uh, when we're in this attack box, we want to tell our character that we are in uh, his vicinity, or in his attackable uh, vicinity. So. Um, we want to go to our player, our RPG dude. So uh, we want to create a variable over here. Um, actually, no, I don't want to create a variable over here. I actually just legitimately want to stay over here, but we're still going to have to cast to our dude. Um, so since we are being attacked over here, I want to... Uh, and we are cast to him. I want to set uh, health, set current health. And of course, this is only going to be of him. Set current health. And we're going to subtract float from float. And we're going to subtract current health uh, from itself. Um, oh, did not mean to do that. It's probably lagging out the engine right now, but. Um, or crash my engine. Uh, I will be right back with a fully working engine. How about that? Alright, we're back, and the good thing is we didn't lose anything except for setting our current health. So, we're going to set current health here again. And we're going to want to get... Uh, current health. Let's see, I want to subtract float from float. Um, so we want to subtract current health from whatever damage we want it to be. So really I want there to be a, a varying damage difference. You know, I don't want him to be 100% consistent with his damage. I want to give, you know, a bit of randomization in what damage he outputs, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is actually something really simple. So we're going to get random, uh, no, 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 random float in range. And so I want him to deal at least 10 points of damage and no more than 25 points of damage. So that will just get a random number from, from in between that range, of course, subtract it from our current health every time he attacks. So um, 
Let's see, I want to also delay it, so that way it's not like the second we walk into that hitbox we just take damage. I want to delay it to where if, if we get, um, let's see, if we get in the hitbox, I'm trying to explain this properly, if we get in the hitbox and he starts to attack us, but he doesn't get to that point where he would actually hit us, and then we back away, you know, I want that delay to be there. Now this may not, this uh, this actually may take a second episode uh, for me to come back and show some more fine tuning, but I want to go to where the zombie animus is. I'm actually gonna save everything real quick. And I'll just look at the attack idol. I'm gonna open that up. So I can see here that he hits us at about somewhere around there, okay? So I'm going to say, I'm gonna delay it for about 1.01 seconds because it's all about accuracy. So I want to delay this. Delay it by 1.01 seconds. Okay, that should be good. Now, if we go here, we've got a, f we don't have a full bar of health. Let me change that real quick by giving him 100% health. And let's see if he attacks us. Okay. And we, we should be dead right now, but of course that we will we will uh, add that very very soon Here so now we can see that he does actually kill us now But like I said if we stop the animation that delay Because that delay, you know, he started to play the animation then we hit him and he he changed his animation uh, stage and he even though we were in that overlap box the entire time it um it still didn't give us that animation. We waited the f full seconds, but we did back out real quick and enter in. Just the way I wanted it to work, we didn't take damage when we backed out. So I was hoping the engine would understand what I was trying to do there, and it, and it did perfectly. So that's awesome. So now we're just going to make it so that way when we hit zero health or below zero health, because of course, you know, if we have 10 health and he hits us with 30, below zero health as well, we uh, want to die. So I'm going to branch off of this. I also want to keep everything very concealed and, uh, and organized. Um, this should be, um, I'm gonna collapse this and call it uh, blocking walk speeds. How about that? Now we're going to create a new one, and I just want to do, do compare float. And I'm going to collapse this into a node and call it um, def. How about that? So let's open that up, and we'll just check, move, get that output out of the way. So our input will be our, excuse me, current health. So we're going to compare that with zero. Of course, if we are equal to or less than zero, we want to destroy actor. Did I not type that right? I must have not typed that correctly the first time. So destroy actor if we are equal to or less than zero. Uh, in the in future episodes, I'm going to I plan to have like a little respawn screen and uh, the death animation, uh, we can do that uh, right now, I suppose, um, just to get that out of the way in this episode. So that way we don't have to have an entirely individual episode. But for, before we do the death animation, I just want to make sure that it works. So he whittles our health down with random intervals of... That, that is an error. We have to enter and re-enter the overlap for him to damage us more. I will, I will fix that. I just want him to kill us right now. Come on. 
Okay, good. So he killed us. The actor is destroyed. If I shift F1 and eject... Yeah. Our, our stuff is still there, but that's because we haven't done the commands to destroy everything with us. So our actor is destroyed. He's still attacking us because we're still kind of technically there. Um, but, okay, that's good. So, I want to add a death animation and then delay our destruction. So, um... Actually, that calls for a lot more because we have to disable a lot of stuff, so I'm actually going to work on that and uh, make sure I get the disabling the movement and turning and everything. So I'm actually going to come back. I said I was going to do it in this episode, but I'm actually going to come back in the next episode and uh, fix the way um, he has to. we have to enter uh, multiple times his... Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Re-enter his... Uh, I just do that? Does that work? I'm gonna crack up if this is it, just to just to do that. Oh no, it, it, it doesn't do it the way I would like it to. Anyways, sorry, so I'm gonna come back so that way we even if we stay in the collision box, we continually take the damage with the delay instead of having to exit the collision box and re-enter because I didn't notice that the first time. So that's a bug we'll fix in the next episode. And, of course, in the next episode we'll have a death animation and a delay for after that death our body is destroyed. Uh, in future episodes I will have a respawn button thing uh, to where, you know, we can just pick up right where we left. But anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode. I'm super, super sorry for not getting around to making this episode earlier, but some of it was really out of my hands with my computer just giving me an insane amount of trouble. So, thank you so much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, you could leave a like and comment for the stuff you're having troubles with. And possibly, if you would like to see something very specifically done with this RPG series, comment it. Maybe I'm planning to do it. Maybe I'm not. Maybe you're helping me out a ton with ideas to do for this series. Also, you can check out my FPS series. But anyways, that's it for this episode. And I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.